Simulation Experiment is aimed to get experience on analytical titration to know how to standardize a basic solution and to determine concentration of an unknown sulfuric acid. Last week, students got experience on precipitation technique to determine barium in unknown sample. This week, students will understand titration technique. Titration is a technique used to find out the concentration of the sample solution. Usually, reagent with known concentration is filled in the burette. It's so-called titrant. And unknown sample or analyzed sample or titrant is pipetting in the aluminum flask. When the titrant and titrant are reacted, two words are considered equivalent point and end point. Equivalent point is an ideal point for the completion of titration. End point of the titration displays from changing of indicator color. Hence, the end point and the equivalent point will be precise and accurate if the right indicator is used. Look at the titration curve which might be strong acid titrated with base or strong base titrated with strong acid. The equivalent point is shown at pH 7. So, if green or phenolphthalein are used, the color change at the pH very close to the pH of the equivalent point. Hence, these two indicators are good for strong acid and strong base titration. However, phenolphthalein is preferable because the color obviously shows from colorless to pink. When strong acid and strong base are reacted, salts and water are produced. The pH of the solution is also neutral. So this chemical reaction is so-called neutralization. For example, hydrochloric acid react with sodium hydroxide to get sodium chloride and water. This reaction is ionic reaction, so we can write down hydronium ion, which is in the aqueous solution, or hydrogen ion react with hydroxide ion in aqueous solution will get water in liquid form. This equation is balanced so one mole of acid reacts with one mole of base. The second equation is sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. Stoichiometric balance the sulfuric acid one mole reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. With this relationship, students can determine concentration of an unknown acid. Today, students will allow to do two sections. First, standardization to calculate exact concentration of sodium hydroxide and use for section two to determine concentration of an unknown sulfuric acid. Chemicals for today are irritated. Hence, if students feel itchy, please wash with tap water several times. Sodium hydroxide might cause burn. So please be careful and follow the instruction. The device for today is quite common for chemists such as a pipette, a pipette bulb, an aluminum flask, a billet with stand and billet cam, a beaker, and a wash bottle. All glassware must be properly rinsed before performing. A remedial flask should be rinsed several times with distilled water. 250 ml beaker is used for stock sodium hydroxide solution. Hence, it should be dry or rinsed with sodium hydroxide solution. 
50 to 100 ml beaker is used for stock hydrochloric acid solution. It should be dry or rinsed with hydrochloric solution. Burette should be rinsed with water falling by sodium hydroxide solution as follow. Clamp the burette clamp on the stand. Close the stopcock and add about 5 ml of water to roughly rinse by turning the burette horizontally and rotating it so that the water contacts the entire inside surface of the burette. Drain the rinse through the tip into the waste container by opening the stopcock. Do the same rinse with water but use sodium hydroxide solution instead. By adding 5 ml of sodium hydroxide solution, rinse to around sodium hydroxide contacts the entire inside surface of the bilirate. Then drain the rinse to the tip into a waste container. Now, the bilirate is clean with sodium hydroxide solution. Filling hydroxide solution to the bilirate assisting with a clean funnel. Mount the billet vertically by a billet cam to a stand. Open stopcock for fill the solution in the billet tip. If a bubble tap in the tip, remove them by opening the stopcock completely several times. Adjust the volume to the desired mark. So the sodium hydroxide solution is ready to perform titration. Pipette should be rinsed with water and solution to pipette as follow. Draw this to water about 3 ml. To roughly rinse the interior surface of the pipette by turning the pipette horizontally and rotating it. Drain the rinse to the waste container. Do the same for acid solution rinse. Time for pipetting by drawing the acid solution into the pipette. Allow the solution rise up above the decimal mark. Adjust the volume to a decimal mark. Transfer the solution to an aluminum flask through the surface of the flask. Add two drops of indicator. Now, students are already to perform titration where the burette containing sodium hydroxide solution and in the flask here containing acid solution. The titration starts from opening the stopcock and allow titrant to drop into the titan in the aluminum flask. During dropping, the flask is regularly swirled. When equivalent point is closed, the color of the indicator will be seen when the titrant hits the solution in the flask, but the color disappears upon stirring. At this point, students may wash the flask with distilled water and continue titrate and stop when the solution in the elementary flask turn from colorless to pale pink. This is considered as the end point. It is important to note that do not use over 50 ml of sodium hydroxide in the burette. If more than 50 ml is needed, refill is required. Two, read the volume from the bottom of meniscus with I at the same level. If not, the result will be early. Before going 
going to calculations. Keep in mind, each section of experiment, 10 ml acid is pipetting into a remedial flask. Sodium hydroxide is filled in the billet. Before titration, the volume of the base is recorded. Then, after titration, volume is also recorded. The difference in volume is a volume of base reacted with acid in the aromatic flask. Since sodium hydroxide is a secondary standard, it needs to determine exact concentration before use. The technique is so-called standardization. The standard solution to determine concentration of sodium hydroxide is hydrochloric acid. From the label, the hydrochloric acid concentration is 0 0.05000, which is four significant figure. The volume of acid is 10 ml by pipetting. Comes to the experiment calculation. For example, after titration, sodium hydroxide is used about 11.20 ml. We can extrapolate to determine moles of hydrochloric acid as follows. The stoichiometric reaction of this reaction is 1 to 1 mole. Hence, if we know the mole of acid, mole of base can be known. From the experiment, we know the concentration of acid and volume by pipetting. Hence, moles of acid can be extrapolated by 1,000 ml of hydrochloric. We have hydronium ion of 0.5000 mole, but in the titration, we use hydrochloric only 10 ml. So it will have 0 0.05000 times 10 divided by 1,000 mole. So it's equal to 5.000 times 10 to minus 4 mole. So in this case, we can conclude that sodium hydroxide also have the same amount of mole. After titration, for example, we use the volume of sodium oxide 11.20. So we can extrapolate to get a molar by sodium hydroxide 11.20 having hydroxide ion of 5.000 times 10 to minus 4 and we extrapolate to 1000 ml or 1 liter to get a concentration so we get 5.000 times 10 to minus 4 times 1000 and divide by 11.20. So in this case, from the calculation, we got 0 0.04464 molar, which for significant figure. Surprisingly, the theory said the standard solution should be filled in the bill rate. But in this case, we do vice versa. This is because two reasons. First, observing color change from colorless to pink is more obvious. And in section two, the sodium hydroxide should be in the billet. So we don't need to use two billets in the same time. Now, come to the main objective. Determining concentration of unknown acid. The unknown acid is diprotic acid, hence the stoichiometric reaction is one mole of acid react with two moles of base. Again, from the experiment, the acid is pipetting 10 ml into the aluminum flask. Sodium hydroxide is in the billet. From section 1, we got the concentration of sodium hydroxide of 0 0.04464 molar. 
if the titration use sodium hydroxide about 3.8 ml, we can determine concentration of sulfuric acid by extrapolation from this relationship. Sodium hydroxide 1000 ml having hydroxide on of 0.04464. In the titration, we use only 3.80 ml. So it should have hydroxide ion of 0.04464 times 3.80 divided by 1000 mole is equal to 1.696 times 10 to minus 4 mole. So from the reaction, we can write down sodium hydroxide 2 moles react with sulfuric acid 1 mole. But we have sodium hydroxide about 1.696 times to 10 minus 4 moles will react with sulfuric of 1 times over 2 times 1.696 times 10 minus 4. So it is equal to 8.481 times 10 to minus 5 mole. Again, try to find the concentration of sulfuric. We use sulfuric acid for the titration of 10 ml. It will have hydronium ion of 8. 0.481 times to 10 minus 5 mole. So, uh, extrapolation to 1000 ml or 1 liter will have H plus of 8.481 times 10 to minus 5 times 1000 divided by 10 mole. This mole is from 1000 ml, so we get the molar of the sulfuric about 0.0084816. From the significant figure of multiplication and division, we get four significant figures. So we get one, two, three, four. We have to look at the fifth digit for round up. So we get the answer of 0 0.008482 molar. Now we have two concentration of base. One is from the label and the other from the experiment. So with these two different, we can calculate the relative error by replace the data. Is the, this is the from experiment, so it's equal to 0 0.04464 minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 times 100, so we will get the relative error. In conclusion, we have two reactions. First reaction acid react with base with the mole ratio of 1 to 1. Hence, if the titration use the same volume of acid and base, it may conclude that the concentration of this acid and base are equal. In the second reaction, sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide reacts with the mole ratio of 1 to 2. Hence, if the volume of the titrant is close to the volume of acid, it means that the concentration of acid is about half of the base concentration. If you have any question, feel free to ask. Thank you.